Autism in Females Maya's Story Maya was very intelligent. She excelled at school and was reading fluently by age five. Maya also excelled at music. She was the lead violinist at school and she also taught herself how to play clarinet. However, she did not have many friends, as she sometimes struggled with small talk. Whenever there was playtime, she would often just sit by herself and read a good book. She often turned down social activities and called out other children when they were disobeying the rules. This turned her would-be friends into her enemies, often leading to other children bullying Maya. By the time Maya was eight, she was bullied so much that she became sick with anxiety almost every night and rarely slept. Maya tried switching schools, but she was bullied there as well. She would tell her mom, everything's different, the school's different, the people are different, yet the bullying is the same, so the only thing that can be wrong is me. As Maya entered her teenage years, she struggled to keep up with social relationships. She tried to blend in by mimicking her friend's body language and speech patterns. Maya found her life very draining, as she was trying to figure out everything all the time. She would be bubbly on the outside, but internally she was struggling with high levels of anxiety and depression. At 15, Maya volunteered with autistic boys. However, she never made the connection that she might have something in common with them. Neither her family nor her physicians picked up on any similarities. The boys were more nonverbal and more destructive, nothing similar to how Maya acted. When Maya reached 16, she became obsessed with controlling her weight like many other autistic teenage girls and developed an eating disorder. She would hide her food and exercise non-stop. When Maya would look in the mirror, she would only see things that were wrong with her. This was a trait of her autism showing. She loved numbers and was obsessed with decreasing her calorie intake. After Maya's parents had been pleading with her to go to a psychiatrist, she finally went and emerged with several diagnoses, including anorexia, bipolar disorder, and agoraphobia. Maya ended up going to university, her lifelong dream. At first, she seemed to thrive despite her ongoing anorexia. She made new friends and enjoyed her classes. But once again, her depression that had come and gone since she was 11 had resurfaced and she refused to go out or socialize. Maya made the difficult decision to take a break from university and hope she would feel better. However, this just made her feel worse. Leaving university made Maya feel like she had no future. She spent her day staying indoors and sleeping at her parents' house. Maya soon reached a point where she wanted to give up. She took more than 30 tablets of paracetamol and 15 codeine pills. Soon after taking the pills, Maya panicked and woke up her parents to take her to the hospital. Maya spent a week in intensive care and nine weeks in the psychiatric unit. It was only when Maya began complaining about how ridiculous it was offices were being closed on bank holiday Mondays and how overwhelming it was for her to walk down a noisy street that the doctor added up the signs to arrive at the correct diagnosis, autism. Maya went back to school for her final year. The university accommodated her diagnosis, allowing her to take her exams alone and with breaks in between. And despite some ongoing depression, Maya graduated. Maya was glad to learn she was on the spectrum, as now she has an explanation for many of the difficulties she went through. A few words for Maya herself was, the more I understand myself, the more I can explain to other people what I find difficult and the more they can help me. Life isn't easy for me, but I understand myself so much better now. By this point, you might be wondering how common this issue actually is. Do a lot of females suffer from a lack of autism diagnosis? Let's go over the most recent data. There have always been substantial differences between the frequency of ASD diagnosis in males and females. The CDC's official data demonstrates that 1 in every 42 males and 1 in every 189 females are diagnosed with ASD as of 2016. As we can see, this is a fairly substantial difference. However, current data points to the significant underdiagnosis of the condition in females. 
Females' presentation of autism is not the same as males. Females present less repetitive behavior, their fixed interests are considered to be normal, and they have less issues with vocabulary and learning. The clinicians are not as familiar with the symptomology of female patients. The majority of clinicians are only familiar with the male's presentation of ASD. This led the researchers to substantially reduce the estimates of relative frequency of ASD males and females, all the way from one female per four males to one female per two or three males. This demonstrates that many of the females who would benefit from an early diagnosis of ASD, they go undiagnosed for several years. To overcome this issue, more funding is needed to conduct further research on the topic. We can all help to raise awareness about the issue and advocate for a more comprehensive education for the clinicians in the field. So hopefully females can also gain the benefits of an early diagnosis of ASD.